Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Staying on with the earlier lecture that how Chandler acknowledges that one compares socio-technical institutions of different nations, one sees ways, one, one looks at the ways in which cultural attitudes, one, okay, values, two, ideologies, three, physical, political systems, four, social structures 5 and so on many 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 more things can come up cultural imperatives uh, and so on how they they affect such imperatives but the weight of argument and empirical evidence in the visible hand okay which chandler wrote a long back that uh, which suggests that any significant departure from the basic pattern would be at best highly unlikely. Okay. I think we stopped here and now we are going to uh, complete this portion in the, in the present lecture that it may be that other conceivable arrangements of power and authority okay, which are very much embedded in the design and control of a technology. For example, those of decentralized or democratic worker uh, self-management could prove capable of administering uh, factories, um, refineries, communication systems and railroads as well as or better than the organizations which Chandler described. Evidence from automobile assembly teams in Sweden and worker managed plants in Yugoslavia and other countries is often presented to salvage these possibilities. Okay. What in, in technology and politics or do artifacts of politics, uh, what Langdon Wiener tried to, uh, to do perhaps, perhaps he was his intent and his purpose was not to settle controversies over this matter here, but merely point to what he considered to be their bone of contention. The available evidence tends to show that many large sophisticated technological systems are in fact highly compatible with centralized hierarchical managerial control. When we talk about centralization, when we talk about hierarchy, it is very much, uh, I mean it very much involves the elements of politics. Okay. That is how we talk about the political control of technological systems okay, in this context. Now, what we are trying to do in the, in the context of such, such embeddedness of politics or embeddedness of the elements of politics in the design and control of a specific technology, okay, such questions have to do with whether or not the pattern is in any sense a requirement of such systems, a question that is not solely an empirical one. The matter ultimately rests on our judgments about what steps, if any, are practically necessary in the workings of particular kinds of technology and what, if anything, such measures require uh, of the structure of human associations. Okay. It is very important to uh, understand this, that the interesting question however, is has to do with whether or not such pattern of the, the, the politically and culturally and economically embeddedness 
political embeddedness of uh, technology okay is in any sense a requirement of such systems a question that is not solely an empirical one the matter ultimately rests on our judgments then we slowly deviate from the fact value dichotomy to uh, to the similarity uh, or to to the the porousness the opaqueness of of uh, opaqueness between or the porousness between uh, facts and values okay in positivism we have studied uh, that uh, there must be a dichotomy between fact and value but here the distinction between fact and value is not rigid but porous okay this is a constructivist argument okay and uh, uh, what we say uh, it it goes beyond positivism it is an anti positivistic construal of uh, 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 science uh, and and technology okay this is very important that that when we talk about judgments we must talk about judgments of what kind whenever we make judgments okay we not only talk about facts but also about values okay that's why i repeat the matter ultimately rests on our judgments about number 1 what steps which are practically necessary in the workings of particular kinds of technology and number 2 what what are such measures which are required of the structure of human associations let me let me uh, uh, go back i mean i'm i'm trying to dwell upon uh, landon winner's reflection on uh, the political construal of technological systems okay i mean let me go back i mean was plato right in saying that a ship at sea uh, needs steering by a decisive hand and that this could be Uh, that that this could only be accomplished by a single captain and an obedient crew is chandler correct in saying that the properties of large scale systems require centralized hierarchical managerial control was engels right when he tried to reflect on on authority okay to answer such questions we would have to examine in some detail the moral claims of practical necessity including those uh, advocated in the doctrines of economics and weigh them against moral claims of other sorts for example the notion that it is good for sailors to participate in the command of a ship or that workers have a right to be involved in making and administering decisions in a factory it is characteristic of societies based on large complex technological systems however that moral reasons other than those of practical necessity appear increasingly obsolete idealistic and irrelevant it they appear the, it is a refactory uh, it is a refied position okay then whatever claims one wish to make on behalf of liberty justice or equality in the context of the political construal of technological systems can be immediately neutralized when confronted with arguments to the effect that fine but that's no way to run a railroad or steam mill or airline or communication system and so then 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 such questions assume greater significance against the backdrop of even the questions of liberty justice or equality okay here we encounter an important quality in modern political discourse and in the way people commonly think about what measures are justified in response to the possibilities which technologies make available in many cases in many examples in many instances to say that some technologies are inherently political is to say that certain widely accepted reasons of practical necessity especially the need to maintain crucial technological systems as smoothly working entities have tended to eclipse other sorts of moral and political reason okay then then the questions of liberty the questions of justice the question of equality the question of moral reasoning the question of political reasoning okay they tend to disappear in the context of the way uh, 
technologies are developed, the way technologies are practiced today. Okay. One attempt to salvage the autonomy of politics from the bind of practical necessity involves the notion that conditions of human association found in the in, in the internal workings of technological systems can easily be kept separately from the polity as a whole. Okay. Earlier we have discussed this. I mean, somebody may say that no, technology is is uh, is merely a technique. Okay. There is no question of public policy, there is no question of politics, there is no question of economics, there is no question of uh, culture, there is no question of society on the whole, there is no question of market. Can you think of a technology which does not consider market in uh, uh, market into a, or which does not take market into account or consideration? Then economics the, the field of economics, the field of market, the field of commerce, the field of culture, the field of public policy, they assume greater significance when we talk about the relationship between technology and politics or when we talk about the design and control of a technological system. Okay. Perhaps you will find that Americans have long rested content in the belief that arrangements of power and authority inside industrial corporations, public utilities and so on have little bearing on public institutions, practices and ideas at large. That democracy stops at the factory gates was taken at as a, as a fact of life that had nothing to do with the practice of political freedom. Okay. But, but the central question which assumes greater significance that, that when we talk about a specific technology we must discuss democracy, we must discuss liberty, we must discuss equality, we must discuss uh, justice, we must discuss political freedom, we must discuss moral and political reasoning. Okay? Because technology cannot be um, examined in isolation, that is what we are going to do in the lectures to follow how technology as, as, as a form of knowledge, as a technology as a form of practice by by uh, Edwin T. Uh, Leighton Jr. Uh, uh, but but let, let us first uh, discuss this uh, uh, let us this uh, let us first uh, complete this component of the course. Okay. But but the question is that can the internal politics of of technology uh, 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 and the politics of the Mm, whole community be easily separated. A recent study of American business leaders, component uh, uh, contemporary uh, exemplars of Chandler's visible hand of management, found them remarkably impatient with such democratic scruples as one man one vote. If democracy does not work for the farm, the most critical institution in all of society, American executives ask how well can it be executed, expected to work for the government or of a nation, particularly when the when that government attempts to interfere with the achievements of the farm. Then if I say that, uh, that uh, a particular dam is remarkably useful for the nation at the cost of the indigenous population. Let us take the example of the northeast. Okay. If I say the design of, uh, of a dam, I mean Suban Siri dam okay, uh, is remarkably useful for the nation, then how can I leave out, how can I leave the aspirations, the, 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 the life and living of the indigenous communities who have been displaced? who have not yet been rehabilitated, who have been dislocated from their uh, homeland, who, who have been dislocated from, from their essence of life and living. Okay. This is very important to remember. Okay. That, that, that if democracy does not work for one particular farm, one particular community, one particular group, one particular social group. Okay then how well it can how well can it be expected to work for the government of a nation 
particularly when that government attempts to interfere with the achievements of those communities, those social groups, those marginalized communities. Those that that political institution that is the state must take into consideration of the uh, of of the interests of these groups, these institutions, this this institutional framework as such. Okay. The the I mean if you if you look at certain things, uh, many may observe that patterns of authority that work effectively in the corporation become for businessmen the desirable model against which to compare political and economic relationships in the rest of society. While such findings are far from conclusive, they do reflect a sentiment increasingly common in the land. What is, what is that? Now, what dilemma is like the energy crisis subject? Energy crisis require is not a redistribution of wealth or broader public participation, but rather stronger centralized public management. Okay? That is what may be argued an especially vivid case in which the operational requirements of a technical system might influence the quality of public life is now at issue in debates about the risks of nuclear power. As the supply of uranium for nuclear reactors runs out, a proposed alternative fuel is the is the plutonium uh, generated as a byproduct in uh, a reactor course. Well known objections to plutonium recycling focus on its unacceptable economic costs, its risks be of environmental contamination and its dangers in regard to the international proliferation of nuclear weapons. Beyond these concerns, however, stands another less widely um, appreciated set of hazards, okay, those that involve the sacrifice of civil liberties. That is what from the very beginning Landon Wiener um, as he um, as he started with this, uh, 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 even Louis Mumford uh, uh, um, discussed this, that technologies are evaluated, technologies are assessed, not simply in terms of their uh, positive and negative environmental side effects, uh, they are not simply judged on the basis of their efficiency, they are not simply judged in terms of their productivity, but, but they, they must be evaluated in terms of the ways in which they embody specific forms of power and authority. That is why the major casualties in, in, the, in the context of the supply of uranium for nuclear reactors okay, that, that it is not simply about economic costs or environmental contamination or dangers in regard to the international proliferation of nuclear weapons. But beyond these concerns, however, stands another less widely appreciated set of hazards, okay, perhaps which is uh, the most, which is one of the most important factors in this context, those that involve sacrifice of civil liberties. My, my right to life, my right to living my right to uh, live, uh, my right to uh, life, I mean to live uh, a meaningful life, to live a life without any uh, 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 dislocation from my habitat, okay? without being dislocated from my habitat. Okay? Which that is, these, these are very important factors. Okay? Loss of civil liberty assumes greater significance okay, as compared to the loss of productivity or efficiency or uh, uh, positive and negative environmental side effects or economic costs or uh, environmental contamination or dangers in regard to the international proliferation of nuclear weapons or and so on. Okay. That is why when, when your own self, when your own uh, self not simply as an individual, but also as a community, but also as an institution, but also as an organization, they are at stake. Okay? Such economic costs, such positive and negative environmental side effects, environmental contamination, efficiency, productivity, okay? 
they are not very important. Your civil liberty is yourself, yourself, not simply as an individual, I repeat, but also as a community, but also as an institution, but also as a culture, but also as a culture is very important. Okay? The widespread use of plutonium as a fuel increases the chance that this toxic substance might be stolen by terrorists, organized crime or other persons. This raises the prospect and not a trivial one that extraordinary measures would have to be taken to safeguard plutonium from theft and to recover it uh, if ever the substance were stolen. Workers in the nuclear industry as well as ordinary citizens outside could well become subject to background security checks, covert uh, surveillance, um, wire tapping, informers and even emergency measures under martial law um, all justified by the need to safeguard plutonium. These are the strategy. Okay. I had Russell W. I had study of the legal ramifications of plutonium recycling concludes with the passage of time and the progress of human civilization, the increase in the quantity of plutonium in existence will come uh, pressure to uh, eliminate the traditional checks the courts and legislatures place on the activities of the executive and to develop a powerful central authority better able to enforce strict safeguards. He avers that once a quantity of plutonium had been stolen, the case for literally turning the country upside down to get it back would be overwhelming. Ayers anticipates and worries about the kinds of thinking that um, uh, as, as uh, winner has argued uh, that uh, which characterize inherently political technologies. Okay? It is still true that in, in a world in which human beings make and maintain artificial systems, nothing is required in an absolute sense, everything is required in a relative sense, okay? because different communities, different individuals, different groups, different countries, different nations, different ethnicities, different religions, different regions, they have relative requirements. Okay? Nevertheless, once a course of action is underway, once artifacts like nuclear power plants have been built and put in operation, the kinds of reasoning that justify the adaptation of social life to technical requirements pop up as spontaneously as flowers in the spring. In our words, let me quote it here, once recycling begins and the risks of plutonium theft become real rather than hypothetical, the case for governmental infringement of protected rights will seem compelling. That is why the state as a political institution, uh, the, I mean uh, the, the, its role becomes very important. After a certain point, those who cannot accept the uh, hard requirements and imperatives will be dismissed as dreamers or fools. Okay? That is how the state uh, uh, characterizes uh, uh, different things, different elements. Okay? The two varieties of interpretation which uh, Landon Wiener has outlined indicate how artifacts can have political qualities. What are those two varieties? In the first instance, we noticed the ways in which specific features in the design or arrangement of a device or system could provide a convenient means of establishing patterns of power and authority in a given setting. Technologies of this kind have a range of flexibility in the dimensions of their material form. It is precisely because they are flexible that their consequences for society must be understood with reference to the social actors able to influence which designs and arrangements are chosen. And in the, in the first instance, we, we discussed that uh, how specific features in the design or arrangement of a device or system could provide a convenient way of establishing such uh, pattern, institutional patterns of power and authority in a given setting, in a given framework. And technologies of such kind have a range of flexibility in the dimensions of their material form. It is precisely because they are flexible, it is because of their flexibility 
that their consequences for society must be understood with reference to the social actors that are able to influence which designs and arrangements are chosen. And such selection is as, as, as we have discussed earlier that in the context of Weber, okay, selection is based on cultural relevance. Okay. Selection is also based on the kind of consensus that you build in the context of Kuhn. Selection is also based on the kind of the alliance between science and politics that you are going to forge or rather in the, in the present context in Indian context I will say that it is the alliance between science, politics and industry okay, uh, which determines what kind of designs and arrangements which are selected or chosen and that, that was the first instance. In the second instance, we examined the ways in which the, the intractable properties of certain kinds of technology are strongly perhaps unavoidably linked to particular institutionalized patterns of power and authority. Here, the initial choice about whether or not to adopt something is decisive in regard to its consequences. Okay? The, the consequences they, 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 they determine what kind of thing that we are going to select. There are no alternative physical um, designs or arrangements that would make a significant difference. There are furthermore no genuine possibilities for creative intervention by different uh, social, economic, political systems whether it, it is capitalist or socialist that could change the intractability of the entity or significantly alter the quality of its political effects. Then in the first instance what we have discussed, in the first instance we examined the ways in which specific features in the design or arrangement of a device or system which could provide a convenient means of establishing patterns of power and authority in a given framework, in a given institutional framework, in a given institutional setting and how technologies of such kind have a range of flexibility or in the dimensions of their material form and because of their flexibility that their consequences for society must be understood with reference to certain social actors which are able to influence which designs and uh, 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 arrangements are chosen and in the second instance we have examined the ways in which the intractable properties of certain kinds of technology are strongly perhaps unavoidably linked to particular institutionalized patterns of power and authority okay? and, and perhaps, perhaps for this reason the initial mm. choice about whether or not to adopt something is uh, decisive in regard to its consequences and there are no alternative physical designs or arrangements that would make a significant difference. There are furthermore no genuine possibilities for creative intervention by different social systems be it capitalist or socialist that could change the intractability of the entity or significantly alter the quality of its political effects. To know which variety of interpretation is applicable given these two instances that we have discussed in a given case to, to, to examine which variety of interpretation is applicable in a given context is often that what is at stake and in disputes. Some of them passionate ones about the meaning of technology for how we live. I, have, I mean the way Langdon Weiner has argued uh, a both hand position, we need both kinds of here for it seems to uh, us that both kinds of understanding are applicable in different circumstances, different contexts. Indeed, it can happen that within a particular complex of technology that is a system of communication or transportation for example, some aspects may be flexible in their possibilities for society, culture, economy, polity while other aspects may be for better or worse completely intractable. The two varieties of interpretation that Langdon Weiner has examined uh, here can overlap and intersect at many points and such intersectionality has to be understood. We need uh, perhaps, perhaps we, we require both kinds of interpretations uh, 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 in, the, in the contemporary uh, context in the, uh, uh, in, uh, and more so in the Indian context.
such inter intersection is very important. These are of course, issues on which people can disagree. Thus, some proponents of energy from renewable sources now be, okay, may believe that they have at last discovered a set of intrinsically democratic egalitarian communitarian technologies. However, the social consequences of building renewable energy systems will surely depend on the specific configurations of both hardware and the social institutions created to bring that energy to us. It may be that we will find ways to turn this silk purse into a sozy earth. Okay. By comparison, advocates of the further development of nuclear power seem to believe that they are working on a rather flexible technology whose adverse social impacts can be fixed by changing the design parameters of reactors or nuclear waste disposal systems. For reason that we have discussed earlier that, that we believe them to be dead wrong in that faith. Yes, we may be able to manage some of the risks to public health and safety that nuclear power brings, but as society adapts to the more dangerous and apparently indelible, uh, indelible uh, features of nuclear power, what will be the long range of toil in human freedom? You may look at nuclear power, you may look at uh, um, uh, bacillus to engines uh, seeds, both food crop uh, as well as non food crop, Bt cotton, Bt uh, brinjal. For example, in the Indian context, uh, you can look at um, uh, large dams. Okay. That is why we, we may be able to manage, we may be able to reduce the level of risks, the amount of risks to public health, safety. Uh, that uh, that these nuclear power projects, these dam projects, large dam projects, these um, uh, BT seed projects, uh, uh, they bring about. But as society adapts to the more dangerous and apparently indelible features of uh, nuclear power, it is a serious question that we must pose that what will be the long range uh, toil in human freedom. What Langdon Winner believed believes that we must, we, we should attend, we ought to attend more closely to technical objects themselves is not to say that we can ignore the contexts in which those objects are situated. A ship at sea may well require as Plato and Ari, uh, Engels insisted a single captain and obedient crews, but a ship out of service parked out at the dock needs only a caretaker. It is interesting. This is how we talk about social shaping of technology. We talk about social construction of technological systems. This is how we talk about uh, talk ag against the way power and authority are a closely embedded in the design and control of a technological system. As Langdon Wiener argues that a ship at sea may well require uh, a single captain and obedient crew. Even, even if you go by you know, when we uh, fly, when we uh, board a flight, okay, we see we uh, always notice that uh, 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 a flight is always uh, controlled by a single captain and an obedient crew and, and, and a few obedient crews. But a flight out of service parked at the dock needs only a caretaker or a group of caretakers. That is why, that is why it is the context in which a flight is situated, a flight is located. If contexts differ, then our uh, structures of power, the structures of authority also differ. Okay? This is not a universal thing, they, but this, this is not a, uh, this is a, not an absolute thing, but this is a relativist position that, that STS scholars are, are taking. To understand which technologies and which contexts are important to us and why they are important is an enterprise, okay? uh, uh, is, is an exercise that must involve both the study of specific uh, technical systems and their history as well as a thorough grasp of the concepts and controversies of political theory. That we will discuss in, in Leighton Jr.'s article on uh, technology as knowledge, okay. uh, it is important. 
it is it is such such the what kind of technologies we require today what kind of technologies are relevant for us today if we ask this question then such exercise must involve number 1 the study of specific technical systems and number 2 the way these specific technical systems have evolved over time and across space and the thorough grasp of the concepts and controversies of political theory in our times in the in the recent times in in contemporary phase what we see people are often willing to make drastic changes in the way they live to accord with technological innovation at the same time they would resist similar kinds of changes justified on political grounds if for no other reason than that it is important for us to achieve a clearer view of these matters than has been hmm, our habit so far then in this in this lecture what we have learned what we have discussed till now we have discussed what matters is not technology itself but the social or economic context in which it is developed in which it is uh, practiced okay it is not simply to understand it is not merely to understand the technology itself but it is also important under what circumstances what under what circumstances ranging from social economic political cultural legal ethical institutional ideological and so on which have given rise to such technology if technology will be in uh, had had technology been a uh, uh, universal phenomenon then what kind of the kind of technology which is used in us india must also be using the similar kind of technology we don't use that kind of technology or africans must be using that kind of technology okay it is the political system which it is the political institution it is the social acceptance it is the cultural embeddedness which determines what kind of technology that we are going to use okay and from this the form of knowledge the form of practice that we tend to look at as a part of technology or rather put to, to put it technology as knowledge assumes greater significance then what we have discussed from the very beginning okay during these these uh, lectures we started with ontological questions then we we went into the normative questions then we discussed uh, uh, the inequalities in science then social shaping of technology okay i mean first first technological shaping of society in a, in a uh, uh, in a bit and then we we went ahead with social shaping of technology within social shaping of technology we are trying to discuss number one technology uh, i mean political construal of technological systems and number two we are going to discuss technology as knowledge 